I uh, good morning. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, last, uh, uh, yesterday we were discussing this. Uh, I, I had asked you to write answer for this program. Uh, I think people done? So this was the last thing that I gave you yesterday. So, uh, is this done? I need your response. Yes, sir. Okay. So we'll uh, just go to the next one. I think I have the solution for this answer. I have with me, but uh, it's not in the available in the PPT. It's there uh, as a program. Hmm? I'll just try to open that later. So now. Uh, functions okay uh, <clears throat> so conditional execution you understood in the previous uh, class yesterday so now functions functions you have already uh, understood I've shown you how to write user defined function and uh, few of the built-in functions also now uh, can I just make uh, the list of uh, built-in functions what you uh, have studied till now? A list of built-in functions. Map, map, lambda. Map, lambda, filter, reduce, and then uh, type. Int is also a function. Float is also a function. str is also a function. Uh, and then maths, uh, you uh, understood uh, few mathematical function logarithm, correct, right? Uh, and then uh, what are the other functions? Print is also a function. Uh, and then simple things, simple functions, you know, uh, built-in functions we understood. Okay. So now uh, we are going to discuss functions in more uh, detail today. okay so function uh, I don't have to explain because you already know it so function is a named a sequence of statements that perform a computation so when you define a function you specify the name and uh, the sequence of statements also and later you can call this function by using its uh, name and one uh, typical example which I've taken here is a type type is also a function and uh, you can pass anything to it so uh, whenever you pass something to it it will tell uh, what type it is now we have passed 32 and it is telling us it is an int so so name of the function here is uh, type okay the name of the function here is type and the expression in parenthesis is called the argument of the function and the same thing whatever uh, you know already and the argument uh, is a value or a variable okay that we are passing to the function uh, as input to the function so this can be uh, a value or sometimes even uh, we go for even passing the variable also and the result of the function uh, for the fun uh, for the type function is uh, the type of the argument so this is what the result uh, written by the function okay this is one uh, simple example which i've taken here so now built in function 
you know many of the built-in functions which are available in Python already. So Python provides uh, important built-in functions uh, so that we can use uh, without needing to provide uh, the function definition. Say for example type so you don't have to provide the function definition you can use as it is. And then uh, you can also go for creating your own functions you know, and include them in Python for others to use. Okay, That is also possible. Say uh, math module we import it. Uh, we have not written them. It's written by somebody else and we are using them. And same thing you can also do. You can go for uh, creating you know, your own function and uh, uh, make it available as a module to other people to use. Okay. And the creator of Python wrote a set of functions to solve the common problems and included them in Python for uh, uh, us to use. Okay. So a few commonly used functions are written you know, and they are included already in the Python and we can go for using that. And if you want, you can create your own uh, uh, function or definition for few things and then uh, make it uh, available to the other people in the form of the module and they can use it. And then uh, there are two more functions, max and min. Uh, give us the largest and the smallest values in the, the list respectively. So all these days, uh, uh, I showed you on the list, correct? No, you can call uh, the function called short and reverse. So what short function on the list does? It shorts the element in ascending order. And what uh, the reverse function does on the list? It shorts the element in the descending order. And similarly, you have functions called as max and min. And these functions can be used in order to find uh, the maximum. Max can be used to find the maximum element in the list. And min can be used to find the minimum element in the list respectively. And again, uh, max and min are also the built-in functions. Okay, And uh, not necessarily, uh, uh, you can use uh, this max and min on uh, what only the uh, list of integer values. It can be used even on the strings also. Now the max is the function which I'm calling now and this function is right now called uh, on the uh, string argument. So hello world. Now what it is printing is w. Now it is going to print the character whose um, ASCII value is higher. Now in this uh, the ASCII value of w is uh, more compared to all other characters and we have w printed. And in the second case minimum of uh, this hello world what I have typed. Now again, uh, there is a white space here, you know, and the ASCII value of this white space is lesser than compared to the ASCII value of all other things. Hence, we have the white space printed. I hope you know uh, the ASCII values. So ASCII value of 0 is uh, 48. ASCII value of uh, lowercase a is 97. And ASCII value of uppercase a is 65. Uh, 65. OK, so this. And now, I just I was interested in finding the minimum of these two, uh, two and three. So minimum is two, and minimum of uh, these things. Okay, and then see uh, now uh, this list what we are giving, so not necessarily be of uh, the homogeneous type. So here it was string, and here it was homogeneous type. That is a list of integers, and here it's a mixture, you know, uh, integer as well as uh, the floating point values. So this is two point two is the minimum, and it is giving you. And the same list, if I pass it to max, it gives you the maximum value that is 17. So max function tells us the largest character in the string. And the min function uh, shows the smallest character. So that is. Now we'll quickly uh, perform the execution of these things and have a look. And uh, the list can contain anything, okay? So it need not be uh, a homogeneous list always. Okay, I'll just uh, copy this. See, W, it's saying, okay? Now, now even this can have uh, the digits also. Say, for example, I'll write zero. So again, this is uh, the biggest one. Now, if I remove all these things, uh, let me run it again. And uh, 
I have removed everything. Let me write 0, 1, 2, 3. Now the maximum uh, ASCII value of 3 is more. Correct, right? Now I should print U 3. So 3 is printed because ASCII value of 0 is 48. ASCII value of 1 is 49. And 2 is 50. And 3 is 51. So the maximum is 3 now. Now similarly, so I want to find the minimum of hello world. So it will be a white space. So it is a white space. Now to this minimum, I just wanted to know whether the ASCII value of 0 is uh, bigger than uh, the ASCII value of white space or not. So if I get uh, the white space again as the result, that means the ASCII value of white space is uh, still lesser than. I think uh, for uh, white space, is, it is 20. ASCII value is 20. And for 0, the ASCII value is 48. Again, uh, you, you should get the result as uh, white space white space okay next is sorry this one minimum of 2 comma 3 is 2 and heterogeneous collection Okay, 2.2. So now uh, you can have uh, the combination of uh, characters also. Okay, uh, say minimum of 5 comma 6 comma. So inside the single quote, I can write it as uh, uh, uppercase A, and then uh, say 6.6. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, int and strings are not supported, but so you can have uh, the homogeneous collection of uh, int and uh, floating point values. So this is uh, a string right now. So this is not a load. Okay. Okay, next one will go. Next. Uh, uh, one more uh, most widely used uh, built-in function is len function. So in case if you are interested in finding the length of a string, then always you can find it by using uh, alien uh, function, built-in function. And this uh, length function is uh, there in all uh, the programming languages. So uh, even in C programming language, if you want to find the length of a string, uh, uh, you can use str alien. Okay? Uh, and here also in Python, uh, uh, there is a built-in function with the name len to find the length of anything. Okay. Now uh, here uh, to len, I'm passing hello world, and it is giving me the length of hello world, including the white space. And uh, this is also possible. Okay. Uh, so these functions are not limited to looking at uh, strings. Okay. Only uh, it's not limited to the strings. So uh, you can do something like this also. So you have len uh, of, I have a string ha into 4. So what is the length of ha? 2. 2 into 4 is 8. So this is, you can do more with len. So not only finding uh, the length of the string, okay. So even uh, the, the string could be uh, uh, a part of an expression. Say I want to multiply the length of the string with 4, I can just do it like this. len. So it, uh, it says it takes the length of this and it is multiplied with uh, uh, 4. That is 2 into 4, 8, something like this. And uh, you should treat the names of the built-in functions as reserved words. So that means avoid uh, using this max, min, len as uh, the variable names. And you should not do this. Okay. Now we'll quickly see this. Okay, 11 is the answer and this one is important now. So it will find the length of this and the length of this will be multiplied with 4. So, 
okay so sorry so this one I have to change so answer is 8 okay okay next is <coughs> so type conversion functions uh, we have already uh, understood these things okay but since we are discussing the topic functions so in type conversion functions are many so we have int we have float we have str you know it seems to understand each one of them in detail okay uh, Python also provides the built-in functions that converts the values from one type to another. So int is an example which takes uh, uh, any value and converts that into an integer. So something like this. Now what we have passed to int is a string uh, 32. Now this string 32 is converted into integer 32. And then uh, the string cannot be converted into integer. Int hello. I'm passing the string hello and I'm just trying to convert it into integer and it is not possible. This is what the error I'm getting. And then uh, this is int a uh, floating point value 3.999. So you can easily convert that into integer. It is 3 and then minus 2.3. So when I pass it as an argument to int, it is 2 minus 2. And then um, 8.7 into 10. Point, uh, uh, phi 2 you know, multiplying this is what the product I'm getting now if I want only the integral part then I can do it inside uh, the int function something like this int of 8.7 into 10.52 is 91 and the fractional part is not taken into account So next, uh, uh, first one was int. Now we have similarly the uh, float. So float of 32. So 32 is integer right now. Now what I'm passing to float as argument is integer. And this integer is now converted into a float 32.0. And then uh, I've given a string now. So this 3.14159 uh, is uh, a string argument which I've passed to float. How do you say this is string? Because it is enclosed inside the single quote. And what it is doing, it's converting it into a floating point value. And another type conversion function which is available is str. So this str will convert to string type. So str converts arg its argument to a string. Now to str, what we have passed right now is 32, which is an integer value. And it is converted into a string. How do you say this is string? Because it is displayed inside the single quote. And similarly to str, again we have passed a floating point value 3.14159, which is again converted back to uh, a string. So next, random numbers. So again, uh, Python provides many built-in functions uh, to generate the random numbers. Okay, now. Uh, random numbers I don't have to explain you people and you know it so given some input uh, most computer program generates the same output every time so it's called as what deterministic so, so you give some input to the computer system and if the computer is generating the same output all the time then you call it as deterministic so deterministic is usually a good thing that means you uh, uh, when you give some uh, input and uh, the computation is same, always you expect the same output. So some applications, we want the computer to be unpredictable. Okay. So that means it should uh, provide uh, different outputs every time. You know? so, so even though you are providing same input, it should give you the different kinds of output. And, and that is required uh, especially when you are uh, uh, playing some games and all you know? so we you, we cannot make the system to be uh, deterministic that time we want the system to be undeterministic so uh, to make the system unpredictable uh, uh, what uh, the random numbers are uh, very much essential okay now how do we generate the random numbers so something like this now to to use there is a function with the name random uh, to use this function random so you got to import uh, the uh, module random so there is also a module with the name random 
so random dot random i have written here you can notice here what is this random is the first random it is a module name what is this another random it is the function which is present inside the module random okay now for i in range 10 okay x is equal to random dot random and i'm calling print x okay the function random okay this function random returns a random float between 0, 0.0 and 1.0 so this is what the function random does remember the function random always whenever you make a call to it always return a returns a random float between 0, 0.0 and 1.0 including 0, 0.0 but not uh, this 1.0 that means the number the random number that is generated by random is bit uh, 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 can be 0, 0.0 and uh, the maximum value random value that can be generated is 0, uh, 0.9 but not 1.0 1.0 is not included but 0, 0.0 is included each time you call random you get the next number in the long uh, in a long series okay the program produces the following list of uh, 10 random numbers between 0, 0.0 and up uh, to uh, but not including uh, 1.0 up to 1.0 but not including 1.0 i have the program in the next slide i'll show you okay sorry uh, this will go for executing so uh, how many such random numbers i want to generate so <coughs> for i in range 10 i have told so uh, it's going to uh, generate 10 random numbers and the random number that is generated so falls in the range 0, 0.0 to 1.0 including 0, 0.0 but excluding 1.0 copying will execute this okay so i'm importing random okay uh, and then for i in range 10 x is equal to random dot random this random is the name of the module and this random is the name of the function the function name is also same random and we are not passing anything to this what this random does by default it will return a random value which is in the range 0, 0.0 to 1.0 including 0, 0.0 and excluding 1.0 now let me press enter see so these are the random values that are generated how many random values are there 10 random values are there and you can just observe all these random numbers that are generated they are in the range 0, 0.0 to 1.0 excluding 1.0 you will never get 1.0 see this is 0 0.92 this is 0 0.98 so what 1.0 you will never get it so can you get 0, 0.0 yes you can get it okay so so many random numbers you know, can be generated uh, by using this random okay hope you people understood till here hello hello so i need your response am i audible yes yes sir yes sir, okay. yes, sir we got it yeah now if you want to see random there are many other functions also now all functions which are there in the random module are imported right now so but i'm using only this function random okay so if you want you can import only these things now import random name of the function is random from random okay import only the random function from the random module so that also you can do next so that is one function which you understood there are other functions also uh, which are present inside the module random okay so random function uh, is only one of many functions that handle random numbers so there is another function with the name rand int the function rand int takes the parameters low and high see it takes two parameters but random you are not passing uh, please mute so please mute uh, 
Hello, uh, 19 CS 404. Hello. 19 CS 404, please mute your mic. You are unmuted, please mute. You are unmuted. Okay, uh, 17 CS 136 also. Please mute. Seventeen CS 136. Still you are unmuted. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. 17 CS 136. If you want to ask, you can ask me something. Yes, go ahead. Ask. Go ahead. But my own voice is echoing to me. Okay, there is another function with the name uh, rant int. So this function takes two values. One is low and the other one is high. So but in random, no, no arguments. You're not passing any argument to the random function. Always it will generate a random number in the range 0 0.0 to 1.0, including 0, 0.0 and excluding 1.0. Now random in, in case if you want to specify uh, the range within which the random numbers must be generated then you can go for using uh, rand int okay so this rand int and is a low and this is 10 now the random number uh, that is generated you know, uh, can be between low and i including both so the the random number that is generated can be 5 also and the random number 10 can also be generated and any number between 5 and 10 okay so this so this is the first execution when i uh, uh, first time when i uh, ran this so i got the random number as 5 so when i uh, executed uh, the it for the second time using the same low and high value i got it as 9 okay so all these things are uh, important you got to remember so when it is random and low and high so the random number that is generated including both low also and i also when it is random it is including 0, 0.0 and excluding 1.0 okay so this is another uh, function so there are many uh, random functions like this and random is one among them the other one which you are understanding now is uh, rand int okay we'll, we'll see this yeah i have already imported uh, the module random so this rand int was also required for me that is the reason i didn't say it as import random from uh, random okay i have imported all the functions which are basically there inside the random module see now the random number generated is 8 so let me repeat the same now it is 5 now it is 9 now again 9 again 5 again 9 again 6 now now 6 okay so similarly uh, if you keep doing this you will also at some point uh, you may get 10 also okay So next is okay now one more function with respect to the random your understanding so first one <coughs> just the random function so which was uh, which used to generate a random number in the range 0 0.0 to 1.0 including 0, 0.0 and excluding 1.0 so rand end function so will allow you to specify the low value and the high value you know and it generates a random number in between low value and high value including low and also high now in case if you want to uh, generate the random number from a sequence okay so choose a random number from a sequence so then you have uh, a function called as choice now the choice can be given uh, the sequence of numbers 
Now, what is the sequence of number I'm giving? So, T is a list right now, which is having three elements, one, two, three. So, choice of T I am doing. Now, what this choice will do? Will randomly choose one among these three elements. Okay. Now, first time when I ran it, so uh, it has chosen two as a random number. So, second time when I ran with the same list, it has taken three as uh, the random number. Okay. So, that is also possible. So, you can also go for randomly choosing from the sequence of numbers or the list of numbers. And for this purpose, you got to make use of uh, the function choice, which is again uh, present inside the module random. Okay. We'll, we'll see this also. So, let me create the list first. Okay. Now I call random dot choice. So choice this this function you know, uh, random module is required again since we have already imported uh, and since we have not closed the interactive uh, uh, Python console. So the random module is already there. Okay. Now so it has taken one. So I'll repeat the execution. Now two. I'll repeat the execution. Now again two repeat the execution to again okay something like this so this is what the choice so now with respect to the random so you have understood three functions one is random another one is randint and another one is choice so random you're not passing any argument it generates the random number from 0, 0.0 to 1.0 excluding 1.0 and randint you can specify the low and i the range within which the random number must be generated including both the ranges low also and i also and the other one if you want to choose a random number from the sequence of elements or the sequence of items so then you can go for using the function choice next absolute operation and even uh, this uh, you have used in other programming languages also uh, sometimes uh, it is necessary for us to print only the absolute value okay of some values so then you can use abs so that uh, function uh, built-in function is also available in python programming language now abs of minus three i'm doing a negative number what i'm getting is the positive number okay and similarly uh, this uh, uh, abs so you you can also give uh, the any complex uh, uh, expression now abs minus 2 2 minus 3 into 7 so uh, it calculates and the result is minus 19 so but while uh, since uh, it has passed minus 19 is passed as an argument to abs now uh, it gets uh, converted into an absolute value and uh, the value that is printed is 19 okay so we'll just uh, see this quickly So three and so even uh, the argument which you pass to ABS can also be an expression involving the variable names. Okay, now this minus copy paste it will take it as a different character. Okay. So now so minus nineteen is the result of this expression. So now we are making it as an absolute value 19. Next round. So this is another built in function which is available in Python. So uh, a round function uh, again you are used in various other programming languages uh, just to round uh, the result to the nearest uh, value. Okay. So in Python it is easy. So the name of uh, the built-in function which you can use in order to round the result to the nearest value is round itself. Okay. Uh, here. So what we are doing uh, 8.7 into I think I multiplied this even earlier also. Uh, we were getting a big number you know, uh, that is uh, I am not sure I think it is there. Now try to go there we will multiply it not an issue. Okay. So round uh, uh, 87 point sorry 8.7 into 10.52 so this is what the result I get so we will do this so first let me multiply this so 
So 8.7 into 10.52 I'm multiplying. So this is what the result I get. So 91.52 it is. Now it should be rounded to since it is exceeding 5, correct? No, uh, it should be rounded to 92. So now I want to round the result. I call round and then I pass this 8.7 into 10.52. Now it is rounded and to the nearest value and it is 92. So now uh, actually uh, when I multiply this is a float again 92.0. Now in case I, I, I just want uh, only the integer part. So again, you can nest this round inside the int also. Okay, that is also possible. Okay, 92. Next. <coughs> eval. Okay. So the function eval is again a built-in function which takes a string, which takes a string interprets it as an expression and returns the result see now if i write something like this to any other function except eval it will treat it as what a string now but when you write okay uh, an expression or uh, something like this within the double quotes okay to an eval function so it will take it as an expression to evaluate it will evaluate and it will print me the result okay so that is uh, the beauty of uh, eval uh, function so it will take a string as the argument and it will interpret that string as an expression evaluates that expression and prints out the result to you okay so let's see this but i think Now this is passed as a string argument to eval. So it takes string as the argument, but it will interpret that string as an expression. So and what is the result is 44. And even when you're writing you know, this uh, string uh, uh, here, it can also be a combination of uh, the variable names and any complex expression here. So it will take it as a string, but it will interpret it as an expression and evaluate sets. next input and eval okay so input function you already know okay so what it does it takes the input from the keyboard and and the input that you are uh, reading from the keyboard using input function you know it will be read in the form of a string always we know that in case if i want to read you know an expression and evaluate it immediately without doing any type casting so then input and eval function plays uh, an important role okay now how to do that observe here input enter the expression okay i'm reading the expression i can go for entering 3 plus 6 now and that 3 plus 6 is assigned to expr now what i do now now i don't have to split convert the 6 into integer and sorry 3 into integers convert cast the 6 into integer and then perform the addition now all these things i need not do it so it is read as string and 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 i know eval is the function which takes strings as the argument and interpret them as what the expression now this eval i am just passing this and and i have it evaluated and the result is printed so that is uh, the beauty so in case if you want to read something from uh, the keyboard using the input and if you want to avoid doing all that uh, unnecessary conversion you know, uh, uh, you can you can avoid all that uh, conversions you know, or the castings by using eval okay so this is easy doing okay, we'll, we'll just uh, do this the expr is equal to in pop i just say enter the expression So it is asking me to enter the expression. Okay, I just say 34 plus 2. Okay, so the expression is entered. Now I call eval and I pass 
expr see and uh, the, the whatever i've read it is assigned to what expr so now it is evaluated and printed 32 plus 34 plus 2 is 36 okay so this is the one place where you'll feel uh, eval is uh, important okay because you don't have to do any uh, casting or the type conversions so you can directly make uh, uh, the uh, you can go for directly evaluating the expression reading it in the form of uh, the string itself okay next this is important from here uh, we, we call it as indexing or you can also call it as uh, slicing okay uh, another common use uh, common operation uh, uses the square brackets and this is called as uh, indexing or slicing so wherever you use uh, the big brackets uh, is something referred as indexing or else you can also call it a slicing because indexings are normally used to separate uh, correct uh, an index or a slice returns the position of a larger value okay so i have a larger value and i want to know uh, the position of something within that larger value so then it can be done by using uh, the concept of indexing or uh, slicing so in the next slide there are examples you'll understand in a string uh, this can be used to produce a substring uh, and all these days you know uh, especially when uh, dealing with the strings you know this is what we do so uh, a, a string main string will be given and will be asked to find uh, whether a substring exists in that main string if that substring exists in the main string go for replacing that substring with a new string you know or delete the substring these are all uh, the string operations which we have done and sometimes we have done all these things using the built-in functions and sometimes we have done without using the built-in function by writing our own functions we have done now all that thing can be very easily done in uh, the python programming language without uh, too much of effort okay so and uh, and to understand with respect to this okay uh, we have index value starts at zero uh, and this is well known okay so even uh, when you have understood the uh, array indexes you know, by default even the array indexes also starts with what zero so if you don't start if you don't want to start with the index zero then you can uh, intentionally change it to some other value but still the default index value is always what zero and similarly in python also when i say the concept of indexing or slicing so the start value is zero index start value is zero and can extend upward to the number of characters in this string minus one okay so if, if i say the the start index value is zero now what will be the end index value that is the number of characters in the string minus one or in general n minus one so when a single argument is given uh, uh, it is one character out of a string okay so that means so so when 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 uh, you give a single argument okay that is nothing but so one character out of a string when two integers are written separated by a colon it is termed as slice okay so next slide you'll understand that now how do we specify the slice by two integers should be there and those two integers must be separated by a colon okay so say for example two colon three it is called as a slice now what that does we'll understand later the the second value is an ending position the first value is the beginning position and the second value is the ending position a portion of the starting uh, string starting at the given position up to but not including the ending position position is produced say for example uh, inside the big bracket i write something like 2 colon 5 so the the substring that will be selected is uh, starting from the position 2 and it will go up to position 4 okay one minus the uh, what uh, ending index what you specify so okay next slide you'll understand all that uh, very clearly i hope you understood uh, what is the concept of indexing or slicing so this is most widely used in order to uh, uh, pick uh, a portion of the string from the given string or uh, to identify and pick a substring from the given string so that that is where you feel uh, the indexing uh, is necessary now we have the example now okay uh, just have a look here so this is my string now how do you say this is string because it is written inside the uh, single quote 
real tar okay so it is written inside the single quote anything which is written inside the single quote is a string and next what you are seeing is an indexing okay now indexing so how do you say this is indexing because you can see this is inside the big bracket i have, I have written two integers uh, i have two integers written in inside the big bracket separated by a colon now whenever you see something like this it is indexing okay now what this tells so choose from the second position okay 0 1 2 a is at position 2 correct no and i have told 6 okay so it does not it will not go up to 6 it will go up to 1 less than this this is 2 3 4 5 okay 1 less than that so a to o is selected this is the substring that is selected uh, this this indexing you know it is selecting this substring from the main string now output what i get is alto okay and similarly now if i want r also correct now then I, I i should go for increasing the uh, value which is after the colon okay so earlier it was six now i have made it as seven now alter so even r is also included so this is a two position two because index always starts from zero remember that zero one two this is l is at three t is at four o is at five and r is at six i said this i value minus one so alter okay next two to eight okay now after six i don't have any characters in my string okay the last uh, uh, index of my string itself is i think seven zero one two three four five six okay so the last index of r is six okay but i don't have uh, uh, what seven and eight but again still it will fetch you till the last character okay now two comma three i've given two and three zero one two okay one less than three correct no this a itself i have only a selected okay only a selected now I, and this can be done the other way also see i want only a to be selected okay only the first character only this character so even you can go for skipping uh, the higher index also okay so just two just two you specify so this two are same so this is these are the kind of examples which are necessary uh, uh, you have to understand all these things uh, even in the interviews correct no uh, these types of questions will be asked so you you, you you need to get familiar with all these things okay so now uh, quickly i uh, will uh, go for executing these things See, alto, alter, and then even though I am giving the higher index outside the boundary, so till what maximum it can fetch, it will take, and then 2 to 3, so 2. 2 3 minus 1 2 it, it will fetch you only one character a and this is exactly same as this it can be done by using this method also so you can see if your intention is to take only one character out of the given string then uh, the the second index is not necessary this one okay and uh, the same thing can also be done like this uh, how say for example uh, I have st okay let me take s is equal to realtor now yes of you can do this also say I want only a to be selected 3 so now it it's on this string on the variable s is a variable now I have my string assigned to this now I'm working on it okay this is the concept of indexing OP people understood it can be done so easily in uh, python so it is uh, selecting searching and selecting uh, a substring from a given string is not at all a difficult job with the python you can very easily do it
Yes. Is it is it clear? Are you people with me? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Yes, yes. And there are a few more interesting things uh, still to understand with respect to the indexing or slicing. This one. Okay. See, have a look here. See here. In in this example, what we did, so we skipped the second part. Second index we skipped it. We we wrote only uh, the lower index. Now this example you observe. So I have two, the lower index specified, but nothing specified in the higher index. What it will do? From the position two, it will take till the end. Okay. From the position two. Everything till the end will be taken as a substring and it will be printed for you. Okay, you can just observe here. So uh, we have omitted uh, the last number or the higher index here. Okay, so 0, 1, 2. From here it will go till the end. Okay, next. So if you just look into the second example, okay, so we have omitted the lower index here. Now what will happen? So when you not specify the uh, lower index, by default it will start from the beginning. Okay, h zero. This is zero zero at position. Uh, one a is at one position, l is at two position, and t is at three position. And as already mentioned, so one less than this, you know, it will go till one less than this. Uh, higher index so h a l t is selected so it is going from the beginning uh, till 4 minus 1 that is 3 0 1 2 3 uh, so this is what is selected so this is this is also uh, important okay so when you have uh, the higher index omitted okay uh, from the lower index everything till the end is selected when you have the lower index omitted okay from the beginning uh, till the higher index minus 1 so it is selected and printed okay so let me copy this so this <coughs> sorry current is my original string so now i have the substring current taken from there okay so from here till the end since we have not specified any uh, higher index okay next one so where uh, the first one is omitted first lower index is omitted sorry So when uh, the lower index is omitted within the indexing or slicing, so we have with always starting from the beginning and going till uh, one lower than the higher index what you have specified. Okay, so zero, one, two, three. Three is one lower than four, and it stops there. Okay, so this is uh, the I think uh, indexing is that much i think i have few more things to tell yeah so i have few more things to tell uh, with respect to the indexing uh, we'll stop at this point now okay uh, it's 12 35 now so you have the next class so let me stop here okay and from tomorrow sorry monday monday you don't have my class uh, tuesday will continue from this point onwards and we will see few more examples on the indexing and even i'll be asking you to uh, uh, right answers for few questions okay so we'll stop at this point if you have any queries uh, and if you want to discuss please uh, uh, discuss with me so i'll uh, just download uh, the attendance list see so if you have any uh, queries and uh, you can please discuss with me
I don't know, it is not downloading immediately. Yeah, it is downloaded. It is the same as it's two days only. Okay. have anything to ask so if you don't have anything we will uh, end the meeting then thank you